Hello and welcome back to Inside with Brett Hawk. I'm a swim nerd. We're all swim nerds. Today on the live show, we have the Huntington Beach Pier Swim Champion, Tom <laughs> Shields. Hey. Tommy. Tom, what is up? Doing? What's happening, man? I got my kangaroo. Um... I love the intro. It's my favorite <laughs> stat about myself. Um, when, when was that? Uh, I set the overall record in 09, so my senior year of high school. Oh, so it was, it was a while um, ago. Yeah, it was like perfect tide, like really low tide. There was some swell, and I wore a, I wore a tear suit, definitely didn't wear a different suit. And um, yeah, I liked the big one, you know what I mean? With the shoulder straps down to the ankles and uh, – caught a wave on the way in it's i think it's still i think it's still just that time whatever it is so um Do you I guys get lucky. any of the oil spill down there uh yeah 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 they got smoked huntington in particular um they just opened oh. back up but i've heard it's not um like all the way gone but i mean i don't know i'm on the other side of the world right now yeah i read something that um aaron Pearsall did a like a 30 mile paddle yesterday or a couple days ago. And he like went through the whole entire oil slick. Uh, and he's just real devastated about it. Obviously anyone that lives over there should be, it's, it's the best part about living there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it's just tough on the wildlife more than, um, I do lament the lack of recreational ability, but um, I can't imagine like what, how much life was lost in that area. Yeah. I'm actually out here now. I'm, uh, I'm out um, in Irvine right now, so I'm I'm close to it where where it happened. So, but um, listen, man, hey, congratulations on some fast swimming over the weekend, man. Good yeah, job. Yeah, thanks, brother. Good job. We're going to actually have a look at some of that in a second. So, mm -hmm. um, fifty fly was American record. Yeah, um, it's been pretty crazy. Uh, I think like in 2012, um, I went like 22.4 in my like debut at Worlds. Sorry, I'm a little out of frame. Hmm. Um, and uh, all the way to last year, I finally went 22.3. <laughs> um, and now to go 21.9 is just kind of like a whack situation. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it was yeah, fun. It's good stuff. Let's uh, let's pull it up, Nate. Let's have a look at this thing because I want to talk yeah. through it maybe from, from start to finish. It's obviously a very short race, but there's some things that you did well in this thing. Um, yeah. This is you. Uh, where where are, we are going off the uh, what is it? The Fina. Um, yeah, this yeah, is their, their Instagram. Yeah, the Fina Instagram. So, um, where are you right before a race? Like, where are you right now in in your head? What's happening? Uh, I'm just trying to get some breaths in and not think too much. Um, I think a lot of what um, I'm probably going to say here is going to be a, a repetition of that. Like uh, I watched the race a couple of times to get some notes for this. And to be honest with you, that's the first race of mine I've seen this whole fall. So um, it's just not really part of my uh, process anymore. I, do, I don't know why. So I just kind of like chill out and I'm like, all right. Yeah. Like trying to get like my belief, like I could do this and then try not to worry too, too much about the points here at FINA or at the world cups. Um, I don't know like if that many people know about them, but like real quick, so it's like 10 for a win, eight for a silver, six, five for the two, one for a third through eight. And then you get bonus points based on your time, how close it is to the world record. Mm -hmm. um, so if you get like 990 FINA points, you get 9.9 .9 bonus. If you get 900 FINA points, you get nine bonus. So um, each individual uh, win, you know what I mean? Each medal placement, so like a gold and a silver is a differential of 200 FINA points, which is, you know, absurd. Um, so winning is very important. And so I was trying not to think about that too, too much with Sebastian in the heat, but uh, that was probably on my mind more than anything else. Right. Okay. All right. Let's go back to this race then. Let's pull it up. Let's get it going. Talk us through it, Tom. Um, there's us. <laughs> I noticed here that I set up really far forward just off this like angle. And I don't think you can usually see it there. And there's my head. I don't remember doing that on purpose. I think for me, I got in the water pretty early. I, I got in the water eighth, like I do every time. And then um, 
what I've changed recently is I'm going five strokes and then six strokes. So here I come up like a little bit, like maybe half a meter early. And then this sixth stroke, I mean, it's, I mean, it's actually more or less a full stroke now that I'm thinking about it. But uh, I just watched Santos do it in Italy. I watched mm -hmm. both his 21 eights just on the feed. And I was like, oh, I should probably just do that. <laughs> so like in my head, I'm just like trying, like I can't put any words to it. I'm just like doing what my brain or what my body's interpretation of what I saw was, right? Right. Um, but th that's cool that you're making little adjustments to, to the kick count and kind of how, how you're coming up and your, your stroke length. I mean, obviously to me, it looked like you nailed pretty much everything in that race. I mean, the start was on point. Entry was great. Um, you know, your first underwaters are incredible. You get through your turn, you come up, you, your stroke length is great, and then you, you hit your wall. To me, it looked like a, a really clean swim. Yeah, I mean, Hungary is like a flyer's paradise because, like, where you come up is where you're hitting the wall in fly, like, at, this, at the levels that, you know, I've swam at for the last, you know, five, six years. Like, my stroke rate, my stroke distance isn't really changing. So where I try to, like, so if I'm hitting the wall on like the perfect end of a stroke, it's going to be where I come up more than anything else. And in Hungary, they're marked on not only the dive, which a lot of pools have um, on the bottom, but it's marked off the 25 wall, which I haven't seen that many pools have. So like even off the turn in a 50 or, you know, the, you know, any of the last turns, like you can kind of like mark that and get that down pretty good. So I love that pool for that reason. <laughs> Talk to me about your um, underwater kick. Uh, I know we, I want to talk more about kind of the mm -hmm. the dangers of of training it in a second, but yeah. just in terms of what you do well, um, you've always been a pretty natural underwater kicker, but you've mm -hmm. developed it to the point where it's one of the world's best, if not the world's best. So, like, how how do you work on your development of your kick? I've never been like Mister Technical Pants, uh, you know, I, and I, I I have like like a 45 minute slideshow I could do on like what I believe works with underwaters, but it's different mm -hmm. for each person. And, and it starts with the hips, you know, and it's like, I, in that little, like, this is a preview of a clinic. If you ever come to one of them, but like, I talk about like George St. Pierre or, you know, really good batters or really good jumpers or really good surfers. Cause they all kind of like keep your hips um, square under your shoulders, which underwater is different, obviously with the plane being horizontal. Um, and, and then just don't do like anything super crazy outside of that. Like keep everything connected, like kick in the shadow mm -hmm. of your body, like everything that you've heard before. I have like a weird way I explain it because I think about things weirdly. But for me, like, you know, going back to like the pier swim or ocean swims, that's where I started. So for me, like um, when you would catch a wave on the way in from those races, um, they would, you know, when the wave is forming and breaking, um when it's green or curling or, or when, depending on your culture whatever you would call it it has a lot of like power whereas like it's whitewash um where it's just like the white fuzzy stuff there's not that much power in it compared to when it broke now mm -hmm. some places have whitewash the size of two-story buildings that's pretty powerful <laughs> um <laughs> but in huntington it's not and so like to stay in like to, with the wave and it's going to be faster than you would be swimming um they teach like it's the same thing as underwater dolphin kick but it's like you know a little bit of a streamline and you dolphin kick a little bit to kind of keep up with it and without fins on it's pretty hard to do on like really low swell days which is a lot of junior guard racing days because um they pick you know they pick what you do that day and they base mm -hmm. it off the swell right and so um just by happenstance i had like trained it a ton as a kid just because like, i could get free um rides in and win more races. And so um, nowadays, like, I really try to get back to like that atmosphere. It's like back then, like, um, <laughs> like there's that one movie. Uh, oh, I just watched Zombie Land where they're talking about like the dudes warming up to go kill zombies, and Woody Harrelson's like does a lion warm up before you know he chases down the gazelle. Or um, and I, I don't, I don't know, I don't connect with that because it's like very not human, and like they live a very different life. But like. When I think about technique, it's like, you know, you hear about these crazy humans doing crazy things and it's like in the same vein, you, you know, like that mom picked up that car. And I don't mm -hmm. think at any point, because her son was under it, um, at any point, I don't think she thought, okay, I should probably use my legs here. 
Right. <laughs> you know, like she right. just picked up the car. So I think like you have to get to the point where like you want something um, so badly. Like that's how it works for me. And then it's like, okay, go get it. And then you train that. So like, well, I do a lot of easy, like slow underwater. So I'm just working on like simple connection, like what makes sense for me to do. Um, you know what I mean? So like, I don't, I'm not yeah. really like, okay, bend my knees this way or like blah, 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 that or this or that. And like, I've also trained it forever. So like to get back to like really simple stuff, I think what I do better than others is I have a really good upkick and I have a really good connection. So like my tempo might be high sometimes, or it's pretty low in the 200, but whatever it is, like I have a good amount of pacing between like the hesitation between the down kick and the up kick or, or vice versa or the timing of it all. And I just think like I have like, a lot of comfort underwater where other people don't um, mm -hmm. necessarily. And like, if I beat someone underwater, it's usually in that area, not in the pure speed or power or like technical prowess. Um, I'm just going to like outwork you and be more comfortable than you. And that's been my whole life. So that's just kind of where, and I'm a big believer that you should triple down on like what you do well. So like, if this doesn't resonate with someone who's listening to it, then don't do that. Um, but this is like, what's gotten me success. So like, I don't like, I'm not on the blocks being like, okay, like I really need to like think about this through the mm -hmm. turn. And I'm just like, no, just go get those guys. And yep. then that is usually where my time drops are come from. And like, I think I had to relearn that last year. Like, like I hadn't dropped time in the short course hundred or in anything since 2015 until last fall. And then I went uh, best time in the hundred fly day one of the finals. And I went out 22, three, which was my best time in the 50. And I was like, man, I really thought that if I was going to drop time, I would come home like 25 mid, um, which I still would like to do at some point. Um, but it didn't, you know, so it's like we tell ourselves like these stories or these things. And it's like, you don't know, at least for me, like, I don't know where like this development's going to come from. Like, again, eight weeks ago or however long ago when I left, uh, you know, August 23rd when I flew out here, if you're like, hey, look, like, I know you feel like you're in really good shape. You've been biking a lot and you're really planning for this 200 this year, but you're, you're going to suck. And you're going to break the American record in the 50. It's like, <laughs> I would have been like, you're lying. Like, I'm never, I'm never going faster than the 50. So I, it's just, you never know. Um, and, and for me, I, I don't know. I don't know if you asked what a lot of people have, like how, how and why now. And at the end, it's like, for me, when I look at time drops um, and how they come this, you know, at this age, because look, if you're, you know, kids or, or other people or, you know, 22 and below who are listening to this, 99% of time dropped in the sport of swimming is getting bigger. We don't, a lot of people don't swim long enough to, you know, learn the next phase, which is opportunity. Yeah. Like we've learned that during COVID, you have to have meets, you have to have mm -hmm. somewhere to be. And then a lot of people talk about uh, belief or faith, which is like, you know, I didn't really maybe connect with the idea of going fast in the 50 until now. And I was like slowly convincing myself I could after last year going a best time after the two fly, which it falls in line with that opportunity thing that these last two, two, you know, these last two weeks, um, these last two fifties, these last two weeks is the first time since maybe worlds in 16, I've done a session opener 50 fly. And I pretty sure I didn't in 16. I'm pretty sure I was coming off a, a relay, which was another 50 fly. So you would say, probably doesn't affect you the same way as like a two fly and isl does but you get my point like yeah i think like 22 three after that you know 148 with chad where i was pretty hurt by the end of it um was pretty good signs that i'm probably capable of this um and then the third thing which i don't think it's talked about enough um is need or requirement you know what i mean like if you get to a point where it just has to happen Mm -hmm. usually the person can find a way to make it happen right like you see that a lot in other sports or you see it a lot in swimming too and like when some when a team requires a performance like the most famous one of all time being jason lezak's anchor in 2008 mm -hmm. um but there's plenty of other relay examples in the blazer or performance examples and um you know it's like i lost the two fly at uh berlin and um I was going to be pretty far out of the top five if I didn't win the 50 with Sebastian being in it and Chad. And so it's like, okay, well, I just got to find a way to figure this out. Not, you know, like that little like change, right. like, okay, well, I have to, you know what right. I mean? And it's like, yeah, I could have easily have lost that race too, but I just mean in terms of dropping time, like that um, uh, emphasis or um, there's some word, intention, I guess, if you will, um, always helps. Dropping time at this age, right? 
because it's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of time in this sport where you're just kind of like doing the same swim, doing the safe thing. And um, I, I've seen it in myself. I've seen it in other swimmers. I'm sure the fans have as well. Like as a swimmer ages, they lose a little bit of the, that electricity, but they trade it for consistency. Um, and so it's nice to kind of have like a little bit of fire um, again. Hey, there's a couple of things I want to ask you here based on some things you just said there. Um, it's super impressive that you're breaking American records and getting faster, like you said, as you're going through this process. You know, you said you've been out there since the middle of October or whatever, and, and now <coughs> here we are. How are you able to – and this is just – I think I know the answer to this, but I want you to explain it for the people out there. How are you able to get faster – as you're racing, but not doing the training that you'd normally do. Like, you know, the old school methodology used to be do a training block, taper, mm -hmm. swim fast. Now it seems like you're racing, racing, racing. As you're racing and training through that, you're getting faster and faster. So how do you do that? Yeah, I think it's hard, right? It's hard for an American um, like me or an audience that might be listening to this to, to relate to Shorker's meters, I think the conversions are all off. Like, I, th I don't know. I think they're pretty forgiving to yards times. That's just my opinion. Obviously, bias there. I don't swim yards anymore. But um, I think even when you break it down, it's like, this is just kind of like what I do. Like, this is how we train at Cal. Like, if, especially if you look at the ISL, not World Cups. World Cups is difficult to kind of train and do because it's a lot of, like, time. It's prelims finals. It's three days a week. But if you look at ISL, it's two sessions a week. I got three swims or four swims. Um, and if I do enough like aerobic stuff, like I switched around the way I've been lifting, like typically we do a lot of our strength stuff later in the week, mm -hmm. let ourselves get into the week. I'd switch that around. I'm doing like, the, you know, all the heaviest squats bench stuff on Monday or Tuesday, depending on when I'm racing, um, just to kind of give myself time to recover before the meet. And then I head towards Olympic lifts and lighter Olympic lifts um, heading into the meet. I'm lifting, you know, two or three times a week, depending on if it's a, you know, five day turnaround, eight day turnaround, mm -hmm. what have you. And then um, outside of that, I mean, I think, uh, I don't know, like I, aerobic capacity doesn't like disappear overnight. Um, also, I'm doing 50s, 100s and 1, 200. Um, so, and I think like getting faster through a meat series like this is just comes from the nature of like having done it a lot and kind of knowing like what to hit. Like again, like the weight room, you're almost looking for like a downtrend in weights because you, you are kind of resting throughout this or um like now i'm on like a nine day rest right so i hit weights pretty hard um the beginning of this week because it's like literally the only half a week i can this whole month um so you just kind of like stay in the moment stay present and for me i just kind of do easy heart rate fast by day um so if i have you know five days off i'll do like one and a half if i have nine days off i'll get three in um and I'll awesome. try to Love double it. and lift on, yeah, I'll try and double and lift on the heart rate days more than anything, but like, yeah, like you have to make compromises and like, uh, Dave's like, you know, he helps me pepper in ideas. Or like if I'm at a complete loss, I'm like, Whoa, this situation, I don't really know how to handle. What do I do? Of course he's always available. Um, but this fall, I kind of wanted to do it. Um, I kind of wanted to rattle the practices and he was cool with it. Um, I wanted him to have a break from having be people all over the world like mm. he's had for the last three years and it's like no you should be a college coach you know what i mean do recruiting you know there's um some pros at home like do that stuff like i'm on the road i don't want you like up at 3 a.m being like oh okay should we do like a 200 kick or it's like i'm 30 i can do this and so right. it's been fun you know um that's cool and, and i'm here you know what i mean it's it's uh you got to trust yourself a lot and um do all that kind of stuff but i think like in terms of actually answering your question, getting faster, it's just like work more in September and then like slowly find things that aren't, um, you know, conducive to high end racing as you move forward. And my planned peak was about early November, but um, it's not a science. Um, it's not a science for most coaches and especially not for me. I've never coached um, like this or at all. Um, so we'll see, you know, I think that we'll, uh, I, I don't know. Like I just told my weight coach the other day, it's like, we, I, you know, we found like a good rhythm with like what we've been doing and it was supposed to kind of change in shifts and or like, you know, uh, shift, uh, shift phases yep. is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. And I was like, can I just like do the same practice for the next couple of weeks? Just with the world cups and everything. And I don't even know like what the weight room situation looks like in Doha and Kazan. So. Right. Right. 
You got to make adjustments. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, you got to, yeah, you got to have to like settle yourself down and take it day by day. And and for me, like what's helped me the most with that over my career is this isn't the first time I've done it. And um, Cameron um, Vandenberg answered every single question I had. Um, every time I traveled with him, I would just follow him around, pick his brain. Um, Cause like he, you know, he knew what was up and, and uh, having spent so much time around Chad and, um, you know, Roland and all the South Africans um, throughout this decade and just kind of like learning from the way that they mm -hmm. do things. Cause this is their life a lot of the times in the mm -hmm. fall. And so it's interesting to um, learn from that. And like, I've been kind of forced into it, kind of forced myself into it because of the short course nature of my life. But, but you have to give credit where it's due. I think that like, you know, certain Aussies more now than earlier, like uh, 10 years ago. And then most South Africans, this is what they do. So like we talk about it as like, oh, it's crazy, but it's like, this is what the fall is. And they had some harder training in January, February, March, and they go and they do super well, man, for like yeah. per capita, like those South Africans can move, dude. So um, it's definitely like, I, I, I resonate with the old school theory or like, you know, the 10 day work week, their band check week, like I've done it all. I think, it'll, you know, there's so many ways to skin the cat, but I think that mm -hmm. there's something to be said for like, especially racing these triples and quadruples. Mm -hmm. I think it, it, it's got to raise your aerobic capacity force racing. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, if I'm truly done with the long course to fly, which we'll see, but like, I'm not racing past a hundred, you know, minute 48, one minute 49, minute 50 seconds. And it's like, I had to have like a lion's share of aerobic training under me from Nova and Mission and Golden West and Cal and Yuri and Greg. Like, I don't, I don't know. You know, it's like, when are we going to cash this in while I'm still swimming? <laughs> so that's kind of my thought. You know? Well, you're cashing in now, man. You're making some bang. <laughs> yeah. um, listen, before we go on to some of this other stuff I want to talk about yeah, here yeah. on the live show. Um, just one last thing. You were pretty vocal a minute ago on, online, mm. and, and for someone that's known as an underwater kicker, how can you? Oh, yeah. How how do you how do you manage to do both? How how do you train someone to improve at it, but also balance the mm. you know, the hypoxic nature of keeping someone underwater as well? Safety, safety. Um, absolutely. I think like so. Um, a cow. I think you know. I don't want to give any of the secret sauce away, but we don't do much beyond that seven second 10 you know maybe a 25 no breath right um so 10 10 seconds no breath i mean if it's going to be a 25 completely no breath it's excuse me either in warm-up or it's all out so yeah it's 9 10 11 seconds right eight with fins on seven six seven with fins on a, you know however much you want to pretend we're, we're going fast mm -hmm. um because that's swimming right like i think that the longest outside of the 53 the longest any event holds their breath um, is that 10, 11 second mark. And that's short course 50s. Um, obviously, like long course 50 fly, you hold your breath as well. Um, but like well, I guess that's what people, people are trying right? like for it's, is it's, yeah. they're the trying for the 425 too, right? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And I think that that's what I'm getting to is I think like if you look at what the 425 is, it's not like. 75s no breath, 100s no breath, or like five minute breath holds. Mm -hmm. Those are fun and can be done in like a safe environment. Um, I usually don't say that like publicly because it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't make you any better at swimming. Like what makes you better at the last 25 is doing a lot of things that feel like the last 25. And the last 25 isn't a long no breath. It's your shortest one usually. And so what usually makes you better at the last 25 is getting used to pain and learning how to move through that technique at that pain level and then how to move through that oxygen, like how to get that oxygen in and out when you're that tired. Right? I think mm -hmm. that's like when it comes to breath control, something people don't think about, um, especially younger people. It's not just like, <gasps> it, no, it's, a <gasps> you know what I mean? It's like, you see, not just me, uh, I'm probably the loudest one because I'm a loud breather, but you see a lot of swimmers like we're you know, thinking about how to get air in and out, in and out, in and out. And so you got to train that part too, right? And that requires breathing, which mm -hmm. you're usually not going to faint if you're breathing. Um, and I think like you got to go fast, right? And so if you're going to train for the last 25, you got to go fast last 25s. And how you get there is you do attrition 50s or you go like freestyle into a stroke and I mean, I'm not making anything up. Like everyone knows how, what that feels yeah. like, right? And uh, yeah. Bob, I love Bob Bowman's quote. 
Um, I'm pretty sure him and Michael have done like a ton of PSAs about, you know, shallow water blackouts. I know NBHC had um, something happen in the past. I'm not too sure, sure. Mm -hmm. But I know they're very vocal with this. And I love Elman's quote. It's like, we work underwater. So we work underwater every turn. You just don't do it. <laughs> you know, you see, yeah. I've heard him say that to his athletes. And it's like, I really relate to that, man. It's like, yeah, I, whenever anyone asks me how to get better underwater, I'm like, just do it. Just do more. Like, it's not like bend your knee less or do this or get your squat more. Like, those things help, but you're not going to truly do underwaters until you truly do underwaters. And I just said this to somebody the other day. Oh, because Chad was making fun of me for um, – not making fun of me. He was just, you know, we were joking around. Um, he's like, oh, you do a lot of, like, slow underwaters. Why is that? So he kind of asked an honest question at the end. And, um, I was like, well, I, in my honest opinion, this is what I tell kids. Um, this is exactly what I said to him. It's like, I think you got to do something slow correctly before you do it right. And so if I can't do like, you know, easy, like I do a lot of like square arm kick underwater where I just kind of chill. Um, Brett, I mean, you've watched me warm up, you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think like, yeah, you just gotta like, you watch every other sport. That's what they do, man. Like they do, uh, you know, like baseball players do a lot of swing motions and warm up or like, you know, a lot of, um, uh, blah, blah, whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Um, yeah. Anyway. Oh, I think I, so I was impressed with that. Like, yeah. Yeah, when it comes to like breath control, like when I'm doing long form stuff, no breath, uh, my requirement is I come up and I can breathe easy. Um, I put that in my Instagram story if you want to go read it. But like if I'm going to do like 100 at one breath or 100 at two breaths or like whatever, you know, um, my rule is I got to come into the wall and I'll just be like, totally fine. I can talk to you. And if I'm kind of breaking that, then I got to like look at what I'm doing. Um, and we don't do any of that assigned at Cal because it just is, it's immaterial. Like I mostly do it for fun or for free diving. Um, cause you know, that's another part of my life, but, um, I don't think it really helps swimming. Like if you, you know, if you got to do high end underwater work that hurts really bad, but like, there's not much point to doing anything beyond a 15 like we've done 50s underwater like for fun or like we'll get a time but that's just like a single one-off like we're not doing multiple 50s all out underwater um we'll do multiple 25s all out underwater like sure you know or like 25s to 20 25 to 15 i get overextending but i just i hate recommending like like all out to failure stuff underwater because like yeah you're playing with your life um yep. it's not worth and it nothing's worth it yeah it's just not worth it and um i don't really think that's like like, I mean, Caleb, Chad, and I at 75 wall short course, obviously, last year, we were together. And Caleb beat us by like a body length or more in that whole 25. And a lot of it was um, on that underwater. And I don't, I don't know what he does. I've, I know Greg, I know Lochte, I, I, I've heard a lot of their sets. And it seems to just be a lot of like attrition, break you down, high effort kicking not necessarily like purely hypoxic right so it's like right i think there's your answer right you just got to yeah. have like really good pain adaptation and the caleb clearly does short and fast get up get your air yeah. short and fast get up get your air yeah. it's not like stay under stay under stay under yeah. yeah okay gotcha all right let's move on to some of this other stuff nate can you stay with us tom oh uh, sure perfect well this is perfect because you 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 probably just saw emma mckeon crush everybody in budapest she was, she was three for three uh, and almost broke the world record in the hunter freestyle. So, um, <coughs> yeah. Did you get a chance to watch her? Um, I think I watched the hunter free was on the last night. Yeah. 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 I think I watched that. Yeah. She almost um, broke the world record real fast. 50 point bad, hunter yeah. free. It's not bad. Not Those Aussie bad. girls can swim. Yeah. Yes. Well, it seems like for one a country of that doesn't care about short course, you know? Yeah. 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 They really don't. They, there's not a lot. There's not much short course swimming going on over there. That's for sure. They really don't care. But, Actually, um, she's um, speaking of Australians, um, Bronte Campbell seems like she's she's not going to be joining you guys for the uh, the yeah. playoffs next I had month. I heard that a little bit earlier than today, but I guess it was announced today. Huh? Mm, yeah, it's a bit of a bummer. But you you got you have some people coming in, but it's always yeah. um, a, a bum. I'm a loss when you yeah, lose. It's, I mean, it, it's absolutely, and it's not just affecting us. And I think that we're getting to the point where people are going to have to be a little bit more like careful with their commitments. Um, mm. Like, obviously we wish the best of Bronte. I wouldn't say any evil towards her, 
um, like Christoph is facing that here, he's getting pressure from iron. Um, and there's, a, you know, plenty of other names, um, and what have you. And so it's just like, um, it's a little frustrating, obviously for each team that, that has to go through that, but, you know, we wish obviously our teammates and other people, you know, other swimmers as well, the best, but we got to, um, start doing the things that we're going to say and say the things yeah. we're going to do. Yeah. It's, it's getting to that point where I, I, I don't know if like this type of press is the best for what we're going for here. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's hard to disagree with you, man. You make a commitment, you commit. I mean, no matter no matter what, unless unless there's a tragic life event, obviously. But you know, if you of course, make a commitment, yeah. you make commitment. You know, like uh, I, I again, feel the same way. I say that without knowing anything that's going on with Ronnie's life. If that's the case, of course they don't. I, yeah, I'm not spoken with her, and that's not about her specifically. That's about just in general. In general, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, coming off the Olympic year. It's been crazy. Everyone's schedules are different. Some people are just opted out completely. Some yeah, are going absolutely. back and forth. So it's um, it has been. It's kind of like if you're if you're a fan, like who's going to be here? Who's going to be swimming at this meet? You know, that's always the the question. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's hard like that. All right, what about next one? All right, Leah Smith. Leah Smith, huh? Yeah. Training in Texas. Yeah, you talked to her down there for a little bit, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, we do we have any footage of her at Texas? We sure do. Of course we do. We, we were trying not to. She she was still like hanging low, like, hey, I just got here. Don't really want anyone to, to say I'm out here but until she does. So we always respect that sort of stuff. But uh, here she is training with them. Look at Nate sneaking in the little sneaky Leah Smith footage at Texas, you little dog. Well, like the, the very first day, she walked right past us as we were walking in, and I was like, you're not supposed to be at Texas. You're supposed to be in Arizona. So, yeah, um, yeah it's good It's good to see her back uh, in the water, you know, um, uh, and going head-to-head -head with Erica Sullivan. We kind of watched her the entire practice. Yeah. Uh, it was it's good to see. Yeah. Two, two Olympic silver medalists, right? Yep, both of them. I think. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, good stuff. Good for her. All right. Next. Caleb. Um, where is this? Caleb came out and did a, uh analysis of his 100 freestyle Olympic um, championship, which I thought was outstanding. Uh, Tom, I think it's a great thing um for and just and just kind of what you did today but i think it's a great idea moving forward to kind of get some some champions to break down their races uh it really gives us an insight into um you know your skill and and the way that you guys think about it yourselves you know we're not in your head you it's you do, out there doing these things so i thought caleb did a really good job with this one i'll give him some props for this oh well, every single one he's done has been fantastic right you got it you, he's learning from it you're watching him learn from it you're learning from it. Um, uh, he says this is the worst turn in swimming. I'm not sure it's exactly the worst turn in swimming, but um, you can see where it's not a perfect race, right? And this is why swimming's so cool. Um, he just won an Olympic gold medal against the Olympic champion by hundreds of a second, and still found plenty of things uh, to that he knows that he can he can do better. Uh, that first breakout though is it was amazing. It might be the best breakout ever. Oh, the worst turn and the best breakout ever. Yeah. Okay, combination. A little combo. <laughs> so if, if you guys haven't seen that, go over to Caleb's page. In the sport. And uh, he'll break down the entire thing. So, again. I think I think he got it, it got taken down the first time. Did it? Um, yeah, you know. Oh, he was using a legal video? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Right. It's, okay. it's, it's tough these days to know. Yeah. Yeah. What you can show and not show we just try to err on the side of not showing anything tom you got any inside info on him coming back for playoffs is he going to do the semifinals? <laughs> no i have i have no idea um i do know that i almost said no to your request specifically because i didn't want to look stupid because his analysis is usually so like like he's like he's watched it a lot of times and i'm like dude i just don't i don't really do that like 
some of the I, and this is my point like i mean caleb's awesome obviously i would never say that i think it's great what he's doing and he's doing what works for him but like some of the best advice i got was from one of my teammates like dude stop watching your races you know what you look like just do you and that's and then i dropped all this time and so it's like it's pretty interesting like i can't think like that but he's got you know an incredible um you know eye for his own swimming and um yeah he's like comically harsh on himself i think um the most americans or most swimmers are right but uh no nah, he's yeah whatever yeah um, however i'm supposed to end that sentence no i will listen man we only had 21 seconds to analyze yours it was dive in <laughs> some underwaters yeah. and, and the thing that impressed me most about your swim actually was just the the timing of your finish it looked like you had like you said, you shortened up your underwater on that second twenty-five and timed it out really well. I just, I love, I love that aspect of it. So that was cool to see because that's that's tough to do in, in a fifty fly. The timing is all out, but when you when you kind of relax and let it go, was that probably one of those swims you didn't even really remember what you did? You're not thinking <laughs> no, what you're I, doing. Actually, one of the changes I made from Berlin to um, Budapest here was like. There's that thing like you can sprint, fly, and spin. Mm -hmm. You are, might be going faster, but you're, if you like screw up your rate or distance per stroke, you're not going to hit the wall right at yeah. where your hands should like should be. So you're actually not going faster. So like that discipline to like slow down enough so I hit at that extension. I honestly think is where the tenth came from. On you're taking level. an extra like, stroke, is what you said, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean this tenth from Berlin to here. It was like just to stay in a little bit more patient so I can hit that wall on that sixth stroke a little bit more hard right yeah gotcha who's next here what's happening mac mac mac's going to bowley max moving yeah Come he's on. uh he's looking towards paris here uh he's been with um craig craig yeah for like his entire life yep you no know? I think he's only 25 years old. He's been with him for half of his, literally half of his life has been with this one coach. So he's going to go out, hang out with uh, Bowley. If you haven't seen his episode, one of the best ones, check that one out when he was in quarantine. Um, and uh, yeah, we already talked about Bronte. Yeah, we talked about her. What about this, uh, Tom? What do you think about our uh, Texas trip and all the Texas stuff we're putting out? We, we need to come to Cal, right? Uh, I mean, if you can get in. Dave doesn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but, yeah, Dave I mean, I, I think uh, you went to the orange and um, whatever meet. Orange and yeah. white. Yeah, orange and yeah, white. Yeah, I didn't I ended up catching the full episode, but they, those boys move at that meet. Yeah, they do. They move. And then we sat down with Eddie. That was pretty cool. And then Nate Nate did a, a lot of um, training video and kind of background stuff for a couple of days. And we kind of released that today. Nate, talk to us about what you put out today. I mean, um, I've kind of been making films my whole life. You know, I just upgraded from a GoPro 3 to a GoPro 9 finally. But I've uh, done a lot of my friend's weddings, uh, man weekend trips, um, trips out to the Maldives, all sorts of things. Uh but, you know, ha haven't really had a time in, to make a real full, extensive vloggy type of film. Uh, and it was it was nice. It was good to get back in the saddle and play with all the music and 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 kind of show the best of Texas. You know, I did this years ago when I went to NC State and I when I made the NC State little film, I just I'm trying to bring out the best. I want NC State people to be proud of it. Same thing with this one. I just want the Texas fans to be like that's it that's that's texas swimming right there so um hopefully it does uh justice for such an amazing tradition you know 42 year big uh big 12 conference championships in a row the whole nine so um yeah if you haven't seen it check it out on youtube it's uh it's on this channel and uh yeah hope you enjoy that yes and if you have a budget and you want us to come out and do one for your school we can we can figure something out <laughs> yeah we'll do that um for sure and then um this week on the pod we had a uh, five-time finnish olympic swim coach marco malvella mm -hmm. and uh cool. going back tom you were talking about um being a lion well he he actually had something interesting to say in this little clip got a lot of people to to text us and direct message us about hey thanks for talking about this because apparently it's you know, crushing athletes is not really talked about 
and he's kind of saying like, Hey, you need, you need to know when to lay off your athletes. So here's this little mm. 40 second clip here. You need, you, you need to make sure that you don't train too hard because not even in a 50 sprints, the swimmers are spr spr sprinting all out, which I mean that, that like, for example, if a lion is, is, um, chasing, chasing some antelope or something mm, to eat, uh, it doesn't run itself to death because if the lion runs too fast, trains too fast, or competes in it too fast, it means that uh, there will be cheetahs coming around and and attack attacking the lay lion the next moment. Mm. So I oh. think that that's something we maximize too much. I think we shouldn't go. We we shouldn't overreach our, our athletes. Yeah, good point. A lot of people texted in about that you know we put out a lot of podcasts obviously we're almost at 200 and some get listened to a lot and some don't get listened to as much um it some of the times it's just about the name right it's about that title and the, and the click through rate and everything and people that skip episodes miss some of the best episodes with some of the most interesting advice this guy mm -hmm. has done so much studying on sports psychology biomechanics the whole nine um and just uh, a wealth of knowledge we'll put out a couple clips he talks about four different body types and and matches those body types up with the exact pro swimmers that he thinks they represent um just some really fantastic interesting stuff coming out of finland so uh thank you marco for stopping in and chatting with brett on that one and then uh tomorrow zipper club member brand newly inducted zipper club member Tyler Clary. Tyler Clary had his uh, chest cut from here down to here and opened up, and they went in and uh, fixed his heart. So we're gonna we're gonna get into we're gonna get into the chest of Tyler Clary tomorrow. Great episode. <laughs> um, I might put a photo up today if he lets me of, of kind of the the scar that he's got now. Pretty wild, but um, yeah, good you're man. Ask permission on that one. Really good man. You were you, you ever been um, teammates with Tyler Tom? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, plenty of times. Um, I skipped the two back ones when I was like 12. Like, oh, I missed my race. <laughs> um, and he was the one. I, that's our first interaction. He's like 13. And he was like, Shields, you missed it. And I was like, I, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I've known Tyler forever. He's a good dude. Um, yeah, I've seen pretty gnarly. I followed his like recovery yeah on social media. But um, it looks like he's doing better now, right? Yeah, yeah, he's doing great, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good. really good. So good for him. That comes out. And then that's episode 199. Episode 200, I just got a confirmation yesterday. I'm going to record that tomorrow. I'm not going to give you any hints, uh, but it is uh, It's a special episode 200. I'm um, really excited about it. Can't wait to record it. And um, it's going to be going to be a lot of fun. That'll come out on Monday. So hopefully we get that done for everybody. But uh, hey, Tom, this has been awesome, man. Thanks for coming to us from the bathroom. We appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Bathroom adjacent. This is, I'm in my room. Oh, there you go. It's just the and wi is better over here. Your wife's with you too, right? That's pretty cool. No, no, she just went back. She's come oh, out she twice now, and she'll be um, coming out again. So I'm very thankful that she's willing to fly. Um, awesome. Schedule's pretty gonna, busy. I was going to ask you that actually. Like, I think I said in the last episode, man. When I I I, I like to travel and everything, but I get I get so homesick. You know, I just want to hang out with my family and Me you've too, been like in, you know, once you're in all these continents, all these time zones, you, you kind of miss it. But yeah. it sounds like you're you're getting to spend she and she gets to travel a little yeah. bit around, too. So it's best of both mm -hmm. worlds, it seems like. Mm -hmm. I think this is like the last fall I can get away with anything like this. Um, I mean, maybe one more, but like with kids on the way and stuff. Um, you know, it's just like, I mean, I'm 30, I'm not like announcing anything, obviously. Oh, congratulations. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, she would kill me. She'd probably be mad about this. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, won't yeah. be able to, I won't be able to travel like this. So it's been fun to do it one last time. And I've never done it truly like this. But uh, if you ever wondered if I was addicted to racing, I think I've proven it now. Um, no, I, as of, I guess I can't answer that publicly, but to your private question, no, as of right now, no. Okay. What about World Unless Short Unless that's course? on the screen publicly. Then I... Oh, there, yeah, this is on the screen. So, are you <laughs> oh, going to World Short yeah, Course? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, as of right now, I haven't been invited. I, I am. I haven't been invited. What like, are you American talking? record holder, like, no big deal. There's like a path. Oh, if you really want to talk about this. Um, well, you can read the, uh, I can say the parts publicly that I can say. I, I've spoken a little bit with you. This one. Um, if you read the how we qualified, it's off the national team. So world ranking, top six, long course. So I'd be third in the 200. Uh, I mean, third in the 100 in like 19th, 17th in the 200. Not really short on the meeting. list to be invited. Oh, my I, God. I understand Come that. Um, okay. So in the 50s through the 100. So then it's only 14 people. So I think like you can read through the specifics, but it's like each there's like one spot in every event. Um, and then they can like fill it in based on some like world rank priority system. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I have no idea who's been invited, who's been accepted. I mean, you can assume all the number one invites have gone out by now. Um, but I don't know who's going and who's not, to be honest with you. Um, funnily enough, though, there I hold the American record in the 50, but um, Coleman holds the world record in the 100. Mm. crazy mm. yeah yeah by a lot um, yeah if it's a short course meet it should be short course times yeah. if it's a long yeah, course i meet, mean it's uh 2010 2010 i think i was the best 100 200 short course flyer we had um 2018 i know i was the best 100 and 200 short course flyer we had and uh, i didn't go to those ones at all um it's frustrating <laughs> like i mean i got good at long course like dave like used it as like a carrot to convince me to try and make the Olympic team. Right. Because, um, like, I just, I really like short course. I'm, I'm done with all the guys for that. Um, but well, there's cash on this one, too, man. There's, like, there's real Dude. cash on this. Yeah, it's going to be a bummer, man. And, like, the cash is always primary. Like, of course, it's what I'm thinking about. But, like, now that, like, I can go 21, it's like, I want to go race Nick. Like, mm -hmm. I've raced, he's beaten me at every world's ever been at, but, like, half a second. <laughs> I don't want to, like, go and actually show up, you know? And, yeah. It's, it's unfortunate they've heard my complaints and that's that let's start the campaign nate get tom shields a world short course we're starting the campaign it's, it's not tom's not in this this is our campaign okay we're gonna get all it right. rolling get tom to worlds get tom to worlds all right we're on it hey man listen appreciate this has been awesome thanks so much um what's the next stop for you uh i leave on sunday to go to doha um, so Doha next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then like, I think, and then like a quick turnaround and we have Kazan and, um, they'll host Europeans right after that. And I'll go to back to Europe to train. Cool. Appreciate it, yep. man. All right. Thanks, thanks guys. guys. Yeah. It's been awesome. Take care, everybody. <clears throat> Peace.